Hello, hello. How are you doing this afternoon? Very glad you're joining me today. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> That's right. It's about that time to start thinking about holiday gifts, okay? Holiday gifts for friends and family members and stuff. <laughs> so, welcome to Holiday Gift and uh, Gadget Ideas, okay? Uh, one of the things we're going to be covering today is talking about lots of different fun tech stuff that has come out uh, this year, good ideas uh, for presents. We'll be talking about all kinds of electronic stuff, uh, maybe give you some... Well, just give you some good ideas on what presents maybe to get somebody or something that somebody might be interested in, okay? So let's go ahead. Oh, I didn't introduce myself. So if you haven't been in one of my classes before, uh, my name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, the Harlem Library, and also the Uchi Creek Library. Now our Grovetown Library because we have a new building and everything. And very glad that you're here with me today. <laughs> and thank you for joining me. Uh, definitely feel free to post any questions that you have into the chat. Okay. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. And also, I'll tell you, welcome to class. And I, I'm going to post my handout to the chat so you can have that as well. Uh, this is kind of a fun class, kind of the only class that we do around uh, November and a little bit early into December. The big thing about this class, of course, is talking about electronic stuff, maybe what to get a gift for somebody, and kind of a big, and maybe an idea for yourself as well. So someone says, hey, what do you want, you know, for the holidays? Uh, what kind of present do you want for Christmas or any of the other holidays that we have? You can always say, well, <laughs> I do know what I want, and tell them what you want, okay? Don't try to do the thing where you beat around the bush. I don't know. I don't really want anything. Well, but then you're like, well, I wonder what they're going to get me. So uh, be kind of more straightforward and tell them what you want, if you, and hopefully you'll get some ideas from this class. So the big question I always start off with is how can I help, okay? So what questions do you have? How can I help? Go ahead and feel free to post them into the chat. So let me go ahead and I'll talk about some of the classes that we have coming up. So we've already had a few classes this week. Now next, uh, excuse me, tomorrow we're actually going to be doing a fun class. We'll be in the morning at 11 o'clock. We'll be doing Raspberry Pi Computer Projects with Alex. That's me. <laughs> so come join me for that. And it's going to be real fun wiring stuff together and everything like that. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be doing internet safety and security, okay? And uh, next week, we'll be doing a few fun classes. One of those are our photography, printing, and virtual scrapbooking. That one's a big one, so that could be a really great uh, gift as well for someone. Get a photo book printed, get up a virtual scrapbook printed, you know, and, and give it to them for that for a holiday gift. And we'll also, we'll be doing... Another project class, we'll be doing an app swap class, and I'll also be doing gadget help on the Harlem Library Facebook page. So come join me uh, for that page, uh, for that class as well. And then near the end of the month, we'll be going to do in this class again, but also we're going to be doing some fun Thanksgiving Day themed classes. We're going to be doing a scratch class, let's draw and animate a turkey. And we're going to be doing another scratch class. Let's make a turkey feather catch game. So come join me for that. Make the turkey jump around and see how many feathers we can catch. Just a little side note, if you are looking for ebooks and audiobooks, we've switched over from RB Digital to our new app, the Libby app. Okay, so definitely look into that. Uh, basically, all you need is your library card. Download the Libby app. Don't look for... Uh, the Columbia County Library, don't look for Harlem Library, don't look for um, Grovetown Library, look for Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System. So if it says, uh, what's your library, uh, tell it that, and then click where it says Georgia Download Destination, and then enter your library card, and you'll have access, okay? Lots of great audiobooks and, um, you know, ebooks too. Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Of course, right now we're doing all our classes online and everything virtually. 
no um, study rooms available at any of our, our, our facilities. Curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library for questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now we're having a subscribe drive. If we can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, we'll get our own customized, um, unique uh, YouTube address, or you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos. Okay, so let's go back here and I'll come back. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> Maybe I should have wet worn a uh, holiday shirt. I don't know. <laughs> or is it too early? Too early? Too early for Christmas music and stuff? Probably. <laughs> All right, so. Let me go ahead and I actually have the handout. Let me do that real quick. Any questions before we get started? Any questions? All right, so let me upload the handout real quick so that you'll have that and we'll all be on the same page, okay? It's uploading it. Excited we got a little bit cooler weather. <laughs> uh, remember last week? It was like in the 80s and stuff, which is very strange for November in Georgia. All right, come on. All right, so now posting that into the chat. Here we go. So you can click that to view our program and everything. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. Now I'm actually going to be jumping in and out of our handout as well. Give you some new ideas. How about that? All right, so generally what happens is you come to class, we'll have a computer in front of you. Of course, a class like this, I probably would um, probably not do the hands-on part, maybe just have it all on the screen and we kind of surf the internet and stuff and show you, um, you know, the different uh, things that are available. So welcome to Gadgets and Gift Ideas for the Holidays. Uh, let's talk about what we're going to cover. Our, our outline is we're going to cover laptops and notebooks, okay, ultrabooks, iPads, Android tablets, Windows tablets, okay, it's a Surface, okay, ebook reader, digital cameras, uh, flash drives, portable hard drives, streaming devices, and we'll talk about free HD digital TV from an antenna. That would be a good gift to give somebody or to get your your family. And then we'll talk about recommended websites and kind of throw in some little bit of extra things that I think would make some really good gifts and stuff. Okay. So first, let's go ahead and let's start talking about notebooks. And I will get out of the, my own way here. And let's see. Whoop. Sorry. <laughs> I clicked the wrong thing. And I think one thing that we can do is a good idea. I think you'd probably find interesting as well is to basically kind of pull up some of the Black Friday ads. We can talk about that a little bit too. All right, and some of the sites that recommend stuff. Hang on one second, let me see.
All right, so I'm going to kind of flip back and forth here. We can kind of cover everything. All right, so let's talk about um, laptops and notebooks. Sorry that took me a second to get everything ready I wanted to show you. Uh, so let's talk about laptops and notebooks, okay? So what to look for in a laptop. Well, do realize there are different types. So when you go to the store, you may say, well, this one's really expensive, and this one is like a gaming laptop, and which I don't have listed there. <laughs> it's a gaming laptop, like an Alienware or something. One's kind of like an all-purpose one. One is more of a business one, okay? So what to really look for? Well, some of the big things are is what type it is, okay? Is it a business? Is it more of a budget one? Those are the ones that are a little bit cheaper. I will tell you one of the issues with, um, oh shoot, that needs to say 10th. Sorry, that's the current uh, version there, sorry. All right, so the big thing that we have going on is we have our different types of laptops, okay? And this is just a picture, just a few different laptops. We'll go talk about Ultrabooks in just a second. So what are you really looking for? So one thing that can happen, especially Black Friday, is that this is the time that a lot of the stores might have a really super good deal on, let's say, something in their sales paper. You go there and they go, oh, we are out of that. Um, and you've, that's the one you've really looked into. So that's a big one to learn all the specs about a new laptop. Uh, before you even get to the store, before you even make your purchase or whatever, if you're going to do online shopping and everything. Uh, so that's really a big one uh, because you want to know about CPU, what, what kind of the general things to look for uh, when getting it. One of the things is that a budget laptop can look like a really great price, but then the problem is it may seem kind of slow. Um, if you follow some of my rules here, it may cost a little more, but trust me, you'll have the, the laptop for a longer time. It may um, last you longer, and well, you'll be happier with it over time, and it will be cheaper over time because instead of having to get a new laptop in just a few years because you bought a budget one, um, you'll spend more money and have one for maybe two, three times longer than um, the other laptop at least, okay? I'm saying at least. I've had, uh, there was one laptop I basically had for 10 years, and then I, I halfway through, I upgraded it, <laughs> and I had to buy a battery for it twice. So, yes, I'm one that I will spend money to get a new laptop um, with good specs, and then I'll keep that laptop for a long time, okay? All right, so have our, bi our business, our budget, all-purpose, of course, our gaming one, which we won't talk about. And battery life's a big one as well. So let's go ahead and look at our base uh, specs here, okay? So a big thing is uh, good specs right now, Intel, which is the leader of our uh, processors. There's an AMD processors too, but Intel really is the leader one. And I believe that it's a le little bit less complicated, so I won't talk about the AMD processors and all that. It's hard to kind of uh, equal those together. But what you'll see is you'll see they'll say this is a this is a i3 i5 i7 okay right now if you went to best buy or you're buying a laptop online what is the newest intel processor well the newest one is an intel generation 10 okay so two things that really matter is the i whatever and then is it 10th generation so that also lets you know how old it is you do want to make sure that the operating system you're getting is Windows 10. If you're looking into getting a um, Windows computer, of course, I'll talk about some other ones. I won't talk about Macs because that's a whole nother that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> but for most people, what you really want is an i5. Okay, for business, work, school, you really want an i5. The reason it's kind of middle of the road of uh, the processor speed and everything. The i3 uh, could be cheaper, but it may seem slower, uh, of course, after a while and everything. Um, the best would be an i7, if you can afford that. I definitely would recommend that. And of course, 10th generation is what you're looking for. Where will you usually see this? Well, usually there's like a little sticker on the laptop. You'll actually see something that says 
Uh, you might see one that says Windows 10 sticker, but you'll usually see something that says Intel Inside uh, Core i5 or whatever, 10th gen or something. Uh, so that would take care of that. At least four gigs of RAM is what you want, okay? Now, one of the things that's happening is we actually are go phasing, they're starting to phase out um, the, the USB, the standard USBs, okay? So if you still have a device that uses USB and everything, which you might have a mouse, you might have an external hard drive, just realize the newer version, the USB-C, is a much smaller plug than USB, and you can get an adapter for it. So it's not really that big a deal, but I would still recommend the current laptop you get, make sure it at least has one normal USB uh, 3 uh, port, okay? Uh, so I would recommend that at least having one, okay? I bought a new laptop, it actually has two USB-C plugs on there and it only has one USB uh, so I actually had to get a um, converter board that will convert um, USB-C to USB okay three <laughs> which means it's just another plug so it's really not that big a deal I will say this one of the things that's interesting for myself is uh, to the, some of the newer laptop ultrabooks are trying to have less ports so they don't have an HDMI port but you can actually get a cord that will plug into the USB-C and you can plug that into the US the HDMI to plug into your TV okay so do you realize that so even if you go to the store and you're like it doesn't have a U HDMI plug on it it's okay if it has USB-C on it that means you can plug it in and it can work that way too all right so a big one is is it a touch screen I, I have a laptop that has a touch screen. I did not buy the laptop because I wanted a touch screen. I wanted everything else. I wanted it to be light, portable. It just ha happens to be a touch screen as well. I personally don't really use the touch screen much, but do realize that there are actually laptops out there that aren't touch screens, but then um, you may be limiting yourself. Maybe you would really like a touch screen. It depends on how you work, okay? Is the keyboard backlit? Was That's kind of more of a, a choice, okay? So why would you want something backlit? Well, you could be watching TV and uh, or watching a movie or something with family, and instead of having to have a light on, you could actually just turn the keyboard light on your keyboard and still be able to do work, maybe not in a pitch black, but a little bit dimmer than having to have like a ceiling fan light on or something on. So that could be very helpful. And that's all kind of your choice. When trying to pick out what kind of laptop that you like or what one laptop you think a family member would like, do you realize some things are customized, some things are specific. Um, and some of the, uh, the companies you can actually go, if you're looking for a good deal, you might actually get a good deal going to the website, the company that makes the laptop's website, okay? So if you go to Lenovo, if you go to HP, um, they may actually have a good deal running and you can customize your laptop before you get it. More customization even than uh, what you would get at, let's say, the Best Buy or someplace like that where they would have a few models or something. But, I mean, like really customizing it, you know, if you wanted more RAM, you wanted a different kind of screen, stuff like that even. The biggest thing that's happening right now and the really thing to focus on is the SSD hard drive, okay? And what I mean by that is, in the past, we've had more mechanized uh, uh, parts like this. Mechanized, well, it's moving. This is that kind of our traditional hard drive. And now, of course, we're moving to the solid state hard drives, which is basically a glorified you know, camera memory card. Uh, the, these are still kind of expensive, so your hard drive may not seem that, that large, uh, you could get, you know, pretty cheap uh, you, um, little flash drives and plug in. Maybe you put your files on there if you do a lot of videos or photos or something or put the money out to begin with and make sure that you have a really large um, SSD hard drive to begin with in your computer, okay? They are more reliable uh, than hard, um, HH, uh, H, excuse me, they are more reliable than HDD 
uh, hard drives because um, of the moving parts and everything. But remember, the biggest thing is if it's important enough, you need to have it in two places, backed up in two places, okay? All right, so fast response, the biggest deal is cost. This will make your computer seem faster, okay, with the SSD. Now, uh, every year, uh, CNET will put out a review of the best hard drives, excuse me, the best computers. Hang on. Oh no. All right, there we go. Oh, I copied those dots and it was not happy about me having the dots. So basically it'll talk about some of the best laptops. I have bought two laptops recommended by them and I've even bought a laptop, rec the higher end one they recommended and I found a cheaper one that was just a little bit, um, I guess you'd say a little bit different, but then I actually found one that was newer processor that was the same price. So that was really good, but I've, I've used, I bought at least three laptops um, from their recommendations and been really happy with it. So this is a good place to start uh, their recommendations. So CNET and they'll tell when the recommendation is. Usually there's a video involved. Usually you can like click on something. Let's see, this is the Surface Pro, which we're about to talk about in just a second. Of course, they usually um, recommend a Mac if that's what you're interested in. Here's your here's a cheap budget laptop that it's talking about Chromebook device and of course gaming laptop as well okay uh, this is a new one a LG Graham interesting ah, it's a 17 inch screen laptop okay and here's the here's the yoga which is the newest version is the 940 and I think I have a recommendation of the 7 um, on here Anyway, which is one of the things, one of the ones is my laptop, is, this, is the um, uh, Lenovo. Anyway, so you can actually go through here, best budget laptop, and then find out information about that. And if you, if you view our shopping class, then that's a good place to go. Once you have a model number, try to find it. And I will tell you this, one problem is some of the stores like Best Buy and Walmart will actually have the the, the laptop manufacturer or like camera make a model number just for them so you can't actually search up and find that model number someplace else you just have to kind of look at the specs and stuff okay so talking about the best gaming laptop and it kind of goes from there so this is like their kind of top 10 I guess you say recommended and usually if you click here we'll go to the um, that's the business laptop where is our, we had a budget one on here, I think. Let's see, where's our budget? Cheap gaming. Okay, so we'll check, click that. And then usually, oh, it sent me right to Amazon anyway. So the, well, let me go back. I want to, usually you give me a nice little in, um, review and stuff. There it is. All right, so there it is. So it talks about that, gives it an eight, and usually there is a video in here somewhere. But as you see, it's very detailed what they have, but if you just mainly read uh, the main section that it talks about, you know, in conclusion and everything, why we gave it so many stars, it's not that hard to understand. Okay. All right. So let's talk about our ultra books. Okay. So the ultra books, the big deal with that is you want it to be light. Okay. An ultra book is the same thing as a laptop or notebook. It's just met you're paying a little bit an extra fee for it to be lighter and to have a big better battery life okay so it's light and portable most have a great battery life cheaper uh, cheaper than most laptops 
Uh, yeah, I guess it depends on which laptop you're talking about. But it's stylish. Uh, it has stylish designs. One con can be that it has a no CD drive on it. Now, these down here, these hybrids, I would say usually that is costs a little bit more than maybe even something that does have the same power and everything to it. But the big thing about this is, is that you can flip it around. It does have a touch screen built in and everything. So there you go right there. So let's talk about iPads a little bit. They have many different sizes of iPads. They have iPad mini, of course. The big thing is the pros about it is, of course, surfing the internet, you know, reading books. And this definitely is a product that you can um, use our uh, Libby, our new Libby app from the library to read ebooks and to listen to audiobooks as well. Okay. Now, the big thing about this is it having a little bit more power than a minute. We'll talk about the, the Android tablets, okay, but it does come with the price. And some of these are actually so, they cost so much that, you, you know, it really is they're trying to say that we are a laptop replacement. But the problem is it does have limitations about uh, work and stuff. It's almost focusing that everything you do is going to be on a cloud somewhere and that you are paying for a cloud service with like Office or some other service like that to upload stuff. Okay. Watch movies, apps, games, cons, no USB, USB flash drive support. You'd be emailing yourself documents um, or you'd have it all like in a cloud service like Google, um, Google Drive or whatever. Uh, using the keypad, it does have a virtual keyboard, but you can get an add-on keyboard if you want to. It is expensive. iPads are expensive. Um, the cell phone, make sure you get a really good case and, of course, some kind of screen protector as well. Okay. Uh, of course, the problem is the glare from the sun can't be used outside just like a laptop. Okay. But these are some of the big ones that they're pushing out there. The fourth generation iPad Air, the iPad Pro, 12-inch uh, fourth generation as well. So that's kind of the newer iPads that they're now selling. Let's talk about Android tablets, okay? An Android tablet can be great for all kinds of devices, uh, well, all kinds of apps and everything on there. Um, this one here is a the Fire, Amazon Fire. Um, this one might be as well. This is a, though there's an Amazon Fire as well. I think that's a different one too. But as you see, the casing can be changed and it can be a little bit more kid friendly as well, like a kid friendly mode. Uh, the big th pro is, of course, the price. Most are cheaper than an iPad, but they're not an iPad or a computer. Okay, an iPad's not a computer, and what I mean by that is like a laptop sit down, full full blown Mac, full blown Windows 10 experience. Okay, can of course search the internet, um, uh, can read ebooks, paper books. It does support our Libby uh, ebook reader and the RB Digital as well. And the great part about this is the cost. A lot of the times you can get a new Amazon tablet when it comes on sale i personally bought a seven inch one for a family member a few years ago um, great product it's not an ipad in any way but it can run netflix it can run um you know it can do email it can do stuff like that so it actually kind of turns it into like a portable tv screen okay some of the cons are each company has a different interface so like uh, Apple, excuse me, Amazon wants you to buy stuff for their Amazon store. And some of the other ones are a little bit more open, but it could have a different interface. App Store does not easy to use and does not have as many apps as the iPad. So do you realize that? Amazon Fire, uh, no Google Docs app is currently, it doesn't have that. You'd actually have to go to the website uh, to do any of that. And it can be a little slow. So do you realize that depending on which one you get. Again, the big benefit on these is the cost is very low, but it is limited on what it can do. Of course, they keep coming out with more and more powerful ones as, as well. Still with a cheap price, but if you want it to run apps, 
watch movies on it, check email, you're good to go. And let's see, I want to see if this is available. It's interesting, these links will actually, uh, every year, they'll either update them or change them. There we go, good. So they actually keep, usually keep the link um, available. So here we are, let's talk about the best Android tablets for 2020, it says. Android tablets rarely make the case for ditching your iPad, but that doesn't mean that uh, there aren't any good ones out there available. Here's our favorites. So let's scroll down here. There you go, the Google Pixel right there. There you go, there's your Amazon Fire. Now that's their 10 inch screen. And that comes in, I'm trying to remember. Okay, that's the 151. I would wait and see if they're coming out with a, um, and of course, as you see here, it's showing that it does video, Prime, Netflix, you know, all kinds of stuff, Spotify. So still, we're talking about a really expensive device with an iPad, and there's like a secondary device right here, okay? And you may want to check that price on Black Friday and see if it comes down any. Uh, there is, it's interesting because the, the, it, it will have ads that will play on it, and you and the one without ads will actually be a little bit cheaper. It's kind of interesting. I mean, with ads, it'll be a little cheaper. But yeah, check this out. Now, this is a 10-inch display, and I'm actually talking about the cheaper ones here in just a second. So if we go back and we look at our Kindles, or let's look at our Kindle Fire. So our Kindle Fire right there. So let's see which ones they're kind of pushing. Here's our 8-inch one, 8-inch plus. Let's see, why was that? I was at a plus, I don't know. Oh, there's their kids edition right there. Something for the whole family. There's your, your Fire 7, Fire 8, Fire 10. Of course, it does have Alexa on it, and they do have different accessories as well. There's our prices. So here's a good Kindle Fire 7. Okay, it's a 7-inch screen for $50. Like I said, I purchased one of these for $40. Okay, this would be a great gift. Hey, Miss Jane, how are you? Glad you're here. Uh, these are, I would recommend these. I bought a few of these. They, they're small little devices. They're not super powerful or anything, but like, I, like it even shows on here, you want to see Netflix, you know, Hulu. If you have Sling TV, it supports most of the major you know, apps and stuff, um, you know, it's a portable TV, you know, as long as you're at Wi-Fi at your house and stuff. So go here, decide which one you're looking at. This kind of has a less of a resolution screen on it. And this one's a little faster. But these have the same. Not sure why that's a plus. Has a little bit more RAM, maybe? Mm. And this one is full 1080p. High resolution screen, but the processors, these processors are all the same. Okay. So this has a high resolution screen, but this $89 one, um, you know, you may or may not even notice that it has the same amount of RAM and stuff. So this one and this one should run the same. Okay. Anyway, so there's lots of different ones out there. Of course, there's a family, there's a, a kid edition, one of those two, kind of fun, inexper inexpensive. Not sure if you could use it for schoolwork. You'd have to see what apps the student would have to use and stuff, um, or it could be just kind of a fun device. Now, 
let's go ahead and let's go to our next part. Let's talk about our hybrid tablets, okay? Well, first we have the Surface, okay? Our Microsoft Surface, we'll go to that website too. So this is Microsoft's answer basically to, we'll talk about this and then we'll talk about this section. So this Microsoft Surface is basically Microsoft's answer to a iPad that they're adding a keyboard to, okay? Now, the interesting thing about this is the Surface does have a laptop price because it does have the full version of Windows 10 on it, okay? So it really is a tablet that has Windows 10 on it, okay? And it does have plugs. So let's talk about what it does. It does real word, PowerPoint, and Excel. You can surf the internet um, with it. You can read books and papers, uh, backed by Microsoft magnetic keyboard, and it does have USB ports. New app stores are not many apps as iPad. So, but most of the apps will probably be on there too. The major ones. Okay, so this is the Surface. Now, who would this be for? Well, it's a little bit iffy. I know someone that has bought one of these, and then they even asked me, they said, uh, do you know how to upgrade the hard drive so it can be bigger? And I was like, I don't know how you could do that on that one. They were able to find someone that would do that. Um, but before that, they were putting, because uh, they were wanting to install really large uh, programs that have to be installed on the hard drive. So it's sleek. It's real Windows 10, okay? It's basically, it's made by Microsoft. The Microsoft, of course, the software is made by Microsoft too, so it should really run great, to be honest. And it really, I have heard that it really is one of the best Windows 10 experiences. Here we have a little commercial. We'll watch it real quick. I got my own laptop. reads your fingerprint. Wait, really? That's so cool. The design is amazing. It's very thin, too. Check it out. Whoa. Did you know it was a touch screen? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, that's super cool. You have mine's pink. What? Mine's blue, of course. It's lightweight. This computer is literally made for me. I'm so excited to use it. <laughs> Really cool. <laughs> this is my favorite gift I've ever received. I can't believe you got these, guys. Hello, me. <laughs> cute. All right. So now it's cute. We kind of talk about all the different accessories, using it for business and everything. So let's go ahead and let's go back. And let's talk about our Chromebook. And I don't have a website for them. Okay. So the Chromebook is, it's one of those, Google doesn't make these. It's actually different companies that make these, okay? So Google makes the software that runs on them. The biggest thing about this is someone will ask me um, what, you know, oh, my kids or whatever, they said that they can use a Chromebook. And I go, well, the problem is Chromebooks, some of them are really low powered. OK, now they can load really quickly. If some of the things that you're doing, um, it loads up and it, it works for you, that's great. Uh, do you realize that they're they're pushing the specs of these at higher, higher, so then they're charging more? almost sometimes as much as getting a new laptop with Windows 10 on it. A Windows 10 machine, you can do everything that a Chromebook does because Chromebook basically has everything built in and you're doing stuff in the browser. Chromebooks do not have Windows 10 in them and it kind of makes them limited. So uh, you really only have to best use if it's online only, will not run any Windows 10 apps, okay? You can go do Google Docs, but like I said, everything you can do here, you can actually do in a Chrome, um, Google Chrome browser that's free to install in your Windows 
a 10 machine, okay? So I don't really diss the Chromebooks, but their limitedness of what they can do versus a full Windows 10 machine, you know, or even a Mac, uh, or even a Surface here, is, is kind of makes it like a maybe a secondary or third, third dairy device for work or school or whatever. So just be aware of that. If you start getting into the range where it's costing too much, you may want to look into getting, you know, a real laptop. Okay. All right. So let's talk about ebook readers, Amazon and the Kindle, uh, Kindle and Nook. Nook is by um, the Barnes and Noble company. Uh, the big thing, the big pro about this is the price. Now look. So we have someone outside reading a book in the sun. <gasps> Yes, in the sun. That's what these things really are made for. That's what really they do really well. So the idea is instead of someone going to the beach, someone that really is a ferocious reader, um, to have all your books on here, it keeping lots of bookmarks and everything, instead of having a real book, um, you just buy it digitally on here. This screen is ink, okay? So big thing is the price, okay? So it shows an example. This one's like a Kindle one. Here's a Fire Tablet one. There's a OS um, version. Oh, this is about uh, the software, sorry. That's about the software being on. So you can actually sync your books on all the different devices and keep going back. So I don't know if I'd say this is a, a third, maybe even a fourth device, because the big deal about this is going outside and being able to read. So really feels like it's something that will really happen in only certain times. Now, some of these do have a glowing screen, so you can read at night as well. Very long battery life, like a month, okay? Because it only uses battery when it changes the screen, okay? Yes, that's a little mind-boggling, but yes, when it changes the screen is when it uses the battery. Because of zinc, it changes the screen, and then that's it. Uh, a lot of them have built-in Wi-Fi, so you can download new books. Remember, you're not, you can, some of these may have an email check-in thing. You don't really want to do stuff like that. It's not really for apps. It's not really for stuff like that. It really is just to read books, okay? Some of these, the, the built-in book readers, some of them actually have it where they'll translate it to audio, you know, like a robot voice or something, but maybe that could be helpful someone trying to get um, through some part, some part of it to read. A lot of these will do PDF, glow in the dark, cheap price. Uh, I've seen cheaper of this too. Black and white, no color. Some you know some have no app store. You download the book, you read the book, and that's it. It's what this device does well. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at that real quick. So if we go to Amazon and we go up here to Kindle. It'll show some of our devices here. Ah, so they've actually updated it. Six inch screen, glare free. Remember that's its big deals having glare free. There's a kids edition here. So you kind of have to figure out, you know, what you're interested in. And I won't get into it, but there are some benefits to having the Amazon devices, like if you have Prime, there's certain books that you can get for free. And there's um, some of the other things as well, okay? See, there's 89, a Kindle uh, with, it's ad supported, so it will kind of show ads uh, randomly. That's why it's a little bit cheaper. Oh, well, that one's the same price as that. But anyway, usually around the holidays, this is Black Friday's when they, really start to drop the price on here. The biggest thing is that, what is the difference between these two? Okay, so paper white. I personally don't know the difference of that. This has a higher resolution. It looks like it's almost double the resolution of these two here. So it just means that it would be a little bit sharper image, okay? And maybe something you need to look at like in a store or something or or maybe even, and I'll even point out a good YouTube um, YouTuber that pulls out a device, reviews a device uh, from their own personal experience, as long as they're not being paid in any way, uh, maybe a good way to start. Anything you buy on here, anything I'm recommended, 
I definitely recommend you look into, you know, fully trying to read all of the reviews of a product that you can find. All right, so let's talk about our digital cameras. So what kind of camera do you want? Now, a lot of us can actually get away with taking pictures with our cell phones now, but do you realize there's a lot of times where you do want that extra zoom lens or you want kind of a real camera, a digital SLR. The biggest con about that, of course, is the expense. But you get your compact camera. So we'll take some pictures similar to our cell phone, but of course you could get a zoom in too. Cheap price. I will tell you this personally, I feel like a lot of the software that's built in for these devices is really behind what we can do with our cell phones. I'm almost waiting for uh, Apple. Apple's very focused on the iPhone and trying to make it better, but I'm almost surprised they don't come out with the i camera, which I think that would be a good market like a digital SLR that has basically an iPhone connected to it. You can run all the software and have the benefits of having a big lens or even a lens like this on the camera too. Okay. So lots of um, reviews. Let me see if this is available. Yay. Okay. So that's available. They've updated the site. So it's talking about the best cameras that they recommend and why they recommend them. And they'll kind of go through each one. There it is, the GoPro Hero 8. Different cameras, the a Sony one. It's the, some of the Sony ones are trying to have kind of a compact body, but then it's still a digital SLR. But remember, when you get involved with a digital SLR, we are talking about an, kind of an expense of camera you maybe even want to have it for a job or a business or something okay mm. ah. best camera there's an icon right there shoot shoot stuff so these are kind of getting into high-end family, high-end photography. Oh, there's a YouTube streamer recommended camera right there. There you go. So it's a lot of stuff maybe even to get you started. Okay. But I really like, like I said, CNET. I really trust a lot what they recommend. And usually there's a video involved in talking about the product as well. So you may still want to be interested in the fully DSLR cameras. The pros, the big con, of course, is the price. You know, there's some places that you may go to Costco or something and they're selling kind of a low end. Um, maybe it's just a special deal. Uh, it comes with the I've, a family member has basically purchased that for a family member once. Had great times with it. The only problem is with it is actually has, a, has some kind of glitch in it. But maybe that was the model uh, of it. It still was a name brand. It was a um, Nikon like that, very happy with it. I think it was like 545 or something. Still has the camera, still charges the camera, carries it around even though it has had a little bit of a glitch in it. And still takes, she still takes lots of pictures with it too. But, um, so some people talk about the price. You may be able to get one, a low end one on the price and that could be a stepping stone to something further, you know, at the end. You just have to look and see. And that was at Costco. Um, three or four years ago. So there you go right there. So check out the deals. And I guess that was kind of like a door buster for Costco or, or you know, check Sam's and places like that. Now, you know what else is a really great gift? A flash drive, a portable hard drive. I've even given the gift of a hard drive and the other person was really excited about it because their computer was kind of filling up. So they were real excited. All right. So some of these, as you can see, we're talking about flash drives here. They may, someone say, well, I need a new flash drive. Maybe they don't want to buy it. This is still kind of an inexpensive gift. You know, you can get really a lot of gigs on there for $7. I think earlier we did a class and I think it were up to basically 64 um, gigs or so being about $7.99, uh, which is $6.99, which is great. Um, so our prices are starting to come down. 
Uh, so just kind of have to look. Now, if they're looking for a lot of hard drive space, they may be more interested in getting an external hard drive. Oh, an external hard drive, okay? And that could be really helpful to them too. The only negative is moving parts. Unless you get them one of the, the newer um, flash drives that are like 128 gigs or so, you just have to check the pricing on that, okay? All right, so let's talk about some of our streaming devices, okay? So let's start off with a Google product. This is the um, Google Chromecast, okay? This is the newest model that they've come out with just about a month ago. Um, it hasn't really been, they haven't really done commercials for it and made a real big deal of it. I think during, um, you know, the Christmas, you know, holiday season, they're going to come out and do that. So uh, the big thing is that it now comes with a remote. So previous versions of the Chromecast did not have a remote. You could only control them like with your cell phone or cast stuff, which I wouldn't recommend recommend it for family members because, or even someone that says, hey, I'm, on the, I'm, on, I'm watching something and the phone rings and I need to pause it. Whoop, I can't because now I'm on the phone. So it made it very, very much recommended a Roku, which I still recommend a Roku as kind of the, the best right there. Have I've bought a few Rokus and I still love them. Um, so this is their newer product, kind of talking about that. And we're also talking about our streaming services that we have for our devices, okay? So YouTube, of course, is available on all the devices I'm going to talk about in a minute. Netflix, you know, Hulu Live TV, Sling TV, Live TV on there. We have a whole uh, Cutting the Cord class where we talk about all this stuff. So this is just kind of a brief overview of it. Okay, so any device could be a remote control as well. Cast it, get a Chromecast as cheap as, you know, $35. I think, let me check and make sure. I don't want to tell you all that. And then they decided that. Let's see. So let's watch a little video here. This is Chromecast with Google TV. It's a handy streaming device that plugs right into your TV. It comes with a voice remote so you can be like, find action movies. And it will show you all the action movies on one screen, no matter which one of your streaming services they're on. So no more, wait, where is that movie? Google TV is great at helping you find exactly what you want to watch, even if you don't know what that is yet. What should I watch? So, yeah, that's Chromecast with Google TV from Google. I like the little commercial here. It's interesting because that's the same thing that a Roku, a Roku can do too. Roku can do too. All right, so it kind of pulls up here, and I went here earlier, and it changes a little bit. It's not as smooth as I want it to be. It's like a jump, 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 jump. But I think this model is more than 35 because the big thing was the old ones were always 35. Okay, so they're showing $50 now. So I'll up that price. But there is a Roku that's $35. But I still would recommend the $50 one because it does allow you to train, tra uh, control the volume on your TV. And I'll show that in just a second. Okay, let, let's leave that there. So they have recently upgraded, so I'll say 49 now. Okay, so let's talk about our Roku's. Okay, a whole bunch of different models. This is the $35 one. I do not believe this allows you to control the volume on. Maybe it does. Maybe they've taken a hint. It looks like they've kind of taken the hint from the Roku being so great. I don't see a power on for the TV though. I'll have to research that. But. Um, if you get the higher end model, which is the, the stick here, usually it's like the $50 category and it changes. And the I think that I think that's recently changed or I have to check that. But anyway, you can turn the TV on and off and the volume on the Roku remote. So if you're a cord caster, I mean, excuse me, a cord cutter, then you can actually do all of that. Now, uh, some of the cons is, uh, of course, there is some maybe money uh, money involved. 
I do recommend things like Pluto TV and of course the cord cutting class. I talk about a whole bunch of free ones out there. And Roku even comes with its own um, Roku channel, which is a whole bunch of free uh, uh, TV and movie and t t movie and TV shows too. Now another really neat device is the Echo Dot. Uh, the smaller one here, the second generation one, it actually has its own built-in speaker. They do have a the Echo, the five-inch screen. Let me show you that one real quick. And I should still have. Hold on, let's see. There it is. So where is our? Let's see. I'll just say Echo. I'm sure it'll pop right up. Yeah. So this is the Echo Show. Uh, last year, the one that they had on sale was a Echo 5, which was this one right here. That's a fantastic price for that device. Um, so they have, yeah, they've dropped the price of that from uh, $89 last year um, to that price. So fantastic device. Has Alexa built in. Has a whole bunch of great stuff built in and stuff too. This is theirs. This is big thing about this is this one's supposed to be an eight inch screen. Okay. But lots of great deals on there. And uh, definitely recommend that. So it has the Alexa built in, has a speaker built in, and all that kind of good stuff. All right. So let's go ahead and let's start talking about some of our, our HD digital TV stuff for my antenna. So if I did get an antenna for my family or a friend or family member, whatever. Now remember, we're just at the cord cutting class. We cover all this, okay? So definitely uh, watch that or well, previous one or, of course, watch one that's coming up. I don't have any scheduled, but I'll probably start back around in January again. What channels can you expect? ABC, NBC, Fox, MeTV, possibly PBS, Grit TV, some of the rest of them. There's a link to some of the channels that you should be able to get. Just type in what your area code is and it'll and tell about you're basically using the antenna. Basically what you need to know is how far away you are from the signal. You need to use uh, antennapoint.com or dtv.gov. Give it your address or give them your um, zip code and it'll tell you how far away you are from the signal and that's how you know which antenna to get. Okay. What's the best antenna? The one that's outside and away from any trees <laughs> and pointed towards North Augusta, okay? That's your best antenna. Or how to get the best signal, I'll say that. All right, so let's talk about some other tech gifts and stuff. Of course, the big one is earbuds, okay? Earbuds, got a family member that um, loves music well, maybe you want to get them some earbuds, some headphones, or something like that. They make some great skull, um, skull candy, make some great inexpensive ones. Some of these inner ear ones actually have a little bit of an odd sound to them sometimes um, that are completely wireless. And even if it has a nice little wire on it, some of those work really well too. So I do recommend the skull candy um, headphones that have a wire. I know that strange so there's a wire from one to the other is what I mean not a wire plugged into your stuff other really great gifts and I will pull up the um, and I said I was going to cover the different parts give me one second here second let's see okay that's not what I want so
Okay, I think that will do what I want. And I want Okay, and then okay, so so, and I'm, I've got what I'm going to talk about in just a second. So earbuds. There's also these little mini. Um, things that you can get for people like little mini consoles and stuff. Of course, there is the Nintendo Switch. It's really popular, but the Switch Lite has come out. It's a $200. They may drop, they may have some kind of bundles or some kind of quick price drop. I haven't seen a price drop anywhere, but they may do that. And it's kind of like, this is kind of like our new Game Boy. It's what they have because it's portable. Okay. Other big thing is little drone things driving the Drones around, I know that's kind of a fun thing if you have a firmware that's interested in that. Lights go outdoor, do a lot of things that way. And also a great battery uh, for charging stuff is a great gift idea as well. Have a family member worried about them being stranded somewhere, get them a good um, uh, battery to charge their phone, then there you go right there. Want to be a superhero, uh, get take a, get one, a big one of these, charge it up. Go with family and eventually you'll be the, the person, hey, can I plug my phone in? My phone's almost dead. Sure. So you'll be a superhero to your family. How about that? The other thing is a Raspberry Pi. Okay. Raspberry Pi is a little mini computer. Okay. A little mini computer that you can do all kind of projects with. I'm actually going to be doing a project with it tomorrow at 11 a.m. So come join me for that. And you can do uh, make it basically like a movie player. You can actually set it up to play games. It will do emulation stuff. So like some really old school games and stuff out there too. Adding a mouse and keyboard to it. Great for project. It also ways that you can do Scratch and Python and all kinds of fun devices. And they've actually come out with a new... With a new version which they call it the Raspberry Pi 4. They actually have a new thing too that actually has, a, it's a Raspberry Pi 4 with the keyboard um, built um, in, which is kind of neat. Allows you to use it as a computer and it still gives you access to all the stuff inside as well. So let me show you the, this is their newest thing they have come out. And this is the Raspberry Pi 4. And you see we have a little video of it. Starts from $35. Um, the 4 gig, 8 gig does cost more. You do have to get the power supplies and stuff separate. And I'll show you a quick little video. They do make products, but their main their main focus really is education. 
So they're, this is kind of they use, using this as an inexpensive desktop computer. The 4 really does is pretty powerful. Um, so, yeah. So a lot of good options there. Kana Kit is the one that I usually buy from. Um, they usually have a great power supply uh, for the unit so that I know it's getting enough power than just using somebody's cell phone charger or something. So there you go right there. Big recommendation. Lots of fun, lots of fun projects and stuff. All right, so let's talk about, well, before we turn into that, I want to talk about the, um, the new game systems that are coming out. Just do a brief overview of that. So basically, this may seem pretty complicated because each system, uh, uh, Nintendo Switch has two models. It has it, the main uh, version, which is 300. The Nintendo, um, well, I guess I could show that. Hold on. So the Nintendo Switch has two models. There we go. Oh, it's going to show all that. Okay, well, I guess I don't get a nice big graphic for some reason. Anyway, so they basically have two models. And this is a basically a product they keep selling out of. The two model one, it's, it's one that plugs into the TV. So you can game that way. And it's also a portable unit as well. But that's why it's 300 okay? And then the other one that I talked about a minute ago is the 200 model, what they call the light. The big deal about that one, it does not plug into the TV, but it does play all the same software and stuff. It's portable. So they're kind of selling this. I, I, I will kind of say this is kind of like a new Game Boy. So this was their idea. They can sell the same software. It plays it. But if you do get spend the extra hundred dollars, you can plug it into the TV, and um, I won't say it's more powerful, but that it's a big deal because um, you know. But gives you you can do either one with it. Okay. Now the one the products that are coming out here at the end of November uh, by Microsoft and by Sony, the Microsoft Xbox is going to come out with two different models. The PlayStation 5 is also coming out with two different models. Um, the biggest ones is, and I actually, I'll talk about the PlayStation 5 first because it's a little bit easier. So it's the PlayStation 5. Everybody's heard of the PlayStation at this point. One, two, three, four, and five. So the newer one's coming out. Um, the big thing about it is, and it does have a unique shape, uh, the big thing about it is, is where is okay it's not exactly what i want anyway the big thing is that it actually has two two of them coming out so the high end one is this one here because it does have a disk drive attached to it it's 500 okay um, which is a lot but do you realize it does have a lot of power here and it is ready for the next generation when a new system comes out the the price of course is high and then the price starts to decrease, decrease. The more they make, the more popular it, make, it is as well. This one here is the same processor and everything. Really, the big thing about this is it doesn't have a disk drive. So it's $400. The problem with that is without having a disk drive, it means you can't go to Walmart. You can't buy a game for somebody and just give it to them unless it's like a gift card or something. And... It also means that any games you play on here, you have to buy from the PlayStation Store, okay, digitally. So here you could still buy stuff from the PlayStation Store digitally. You could borrow friends' games, get family members' games, stuff like this. So this is the one that it, the, the like kind of the true gamers really want is one that has the disk drive so they can share, swap, get used games, you know, at a cheaper price, stuff like that. Now, the, uh, the Xbox uh, is actually coming out with two different models as well. It's high-end or X-series. I know it's a little confusing because the last model they called the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X. Well, this they're going to call this the Xbox Series X. This is the higher-end one. It's $500. It comes with a disk drive. Um, it's high-end, it's uh, like 4K ready and all that kind of stuff. I want to go into that. 
This is the cheaper model for $300. It does not have a disk drive. It does come with some, uh, like a subscription service to some of their downloadable games service. I won't go into that um, for about a year, I believe. But no disk drive, again, means that you have to buy games exclusively from Xbox. You can't buy used games at a cheaper price or anything like that. So it really limits to what you can do. Both of these companies feel like they're, they can make more money by selling directly to everyone, not having to make the DVDs anymore, sell them directly. They can make more money and they can kind of squeeze out companies that will sell secondhand games like GameStop or Walmart even. Uh, does Walmart sell used games? Yes, they do actually, but they're prepackaged and everything. I have a section, a certain, certain section for that. So when games go on sale, when you're in the store, it doesn't mean anything because if you, this one actually is not as powerful as this one. So even if someone did do this, they would be playing, but the video is not as high quality as this one is if someone has a 4K TV. So again, the $500 one is kind of like a, a true gamer. That's what they would want, okay? And it has a disk drive so they can play friends games and stuff like that. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too discuss the um, too uh, much discussion going on, but just realize that there's two models here, there's two models here, and Nintendo also has two models as well. Okay, so you have to think about if you're going to purchase something for a gamer, which ones to purchase. Okay. All right, so let's go on to our next section. A uh, really fun one talking about gift cards. And if you are playing on getting a family member uh, one of those game systems, just realize that all three of them now have a uh, basically subscription service that you can get, and they will get some games free a month. And if you were getting them something like that, usually they have the gift cards that you can purchase as well. You know, they can buy online games or, you know, just a gift card to a store so they can purchase what they want. You know, the, I, the Apple Store lets them play games. They can buy movies, you know, all kinds of stuff. Netflix gift cards, uh, Hulu gift cards. Here's the PlayStation Network, a GameStop gift card does a lot. There you go, Xbox points, so they can purchase stuff like that. So um, getting someone a gift card a lot of times seems very generic, but if you get them a gift card for something you know that they like, okay, I've even uh, bought a gift card for someone, and because I bought it at the store, not one of the kiosks at um, uh, CVS, Walmart, you know, Walgreens, Target has the big kiosk, Kroger. Um, because I actually bought it from the store, they gave me a nice little uh, um, thing that it went in, and it was very, very nice. So it was like a nice little holder. So when I gave it the gift, they were like, oh, you know, like that. So let's kind of finish, wrap it up here. Let's talk about recommended online stores. Tiger Direct, Amazon, using Price Grabber, uh, unique gifts. We'll talk about some of our other unique gifts and kind of some of the recommended things. This is a really fun store. It's called Think Geek. Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. I had heard that. So never mind. <laughs> Sad. So anyway, so I guess they have gone out of business. I knew that they had been bought by GameStop, but I thought GameStop. So I guess now GameStop is selling their products too. All right, eBay, of course, you're looking at reviews on CNET and looking at holiday gift uh, ideas, which I have that pulled up as well. So let's look at that real quick. So CNET actually has a great, and that's the address I have listed there, Holiday gift guides, see their favorites. They've got lists of gifts under $30, $50, under $100, gifts under $250 or so. So you scroll down here, there you go, Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, some headphones, what they recommend. A smart clock, some earbuds. Ooh, a indoor interesting indoor skillet <laughs> there you go lodge grilled pan and cheap and easy way to bring the essence 
of the grill experience to your stovetop. There you go. There you go. And there's the Echo Dot third generation. Like I said, they actually have a speaker in there now. So it's a lot more flexible than the previous ones. There you go, Roku Express. Now this one does not have the volume control on the TV. So I actually do recommend spending the extra 20 bucks or whatever uh, to get that because it is well worth it, trust me. But I'm glad they have a, a lower end price. And as the holidays come along, you'll see that those are on sale as well. I do recommend the little Waze cameras. Excuse me, Wise. See, so it's kind of going through a lot of the things that we talked about, the things that they really want to be specific about, I'm talking about under $30 or so. Now, I'll show you one another product that I've uh, recently acquired and I really like too. And that actually is the Wise Scale. Uh, it's $28. The cool part about it is you can actually set it up for more than one fan member. It'll do tra uh, tracking if you're interested in weight loss or just protein level, BMI, all kinds of stuff it'll do. It does your heart rate when you stand on it. And you may have had a smart scale before, but then you had to figure it out and program it by hand. This is all done. Uh, in the app. So basically the app you just tell it stuff. The biggest thing about it is it actually keeps a, a record every time you step on it then it reconnects using Bluetooth and there's no monthly fees here. I would, did not want any kind of weird monthly fee. There's no monthly fees here. So when you, when you turn the scale on, you turn on your app, it'll reconnect to your phone and give you all the, the charting of your previous weight and everything. So, oh we have a video. Okay, let's watch our little video here. how he was working out with the uh, the scale and carrying it up the mountain but it's a very cheap it's at $28 on Amazon right now the other thing that's really great is that they actually if you have a family that's looking for an inexpensive Fitbit type device it's actually 29 on Amazon it's the wise band and it acts basically just like a um, Fitbit does and it does connect up with uh, heart rate monitor, sleep monitor, all kinds of stuff. It does have a built-in Alexa. If it's connected to your phone through Bluetooth, meaning you have the app on your phone open, you can actually uh, talk to it and talk to Alexa too. So it does have Alexa built in. And again, this is one of those things where it doesn't do um, any monthly charge or anything. We have a little video. <laughs>
Alexa, how's the weather? I would not, of course, not recommend taking a shower with anything that says it is waterproof in any way because that may not work out for you. All right, so that's really two big recommendations there. Pretty inexpensive, less than $30. So kind of think of it as a combination for $60. Bucks, you can get a um, Fitbit type device that connects up to a, uh, you know, a scale. So that's kind of a neat recommendation. Now, the other one is, I've, I talked about our CNET recommend, recommended gifts. We also have our gift ideas, which are a little bit more, um, I guess you'd say soft. Uh, kind of, they have some fun things on there. Cool gift ideas, um, even projects. And uh, tomorrow we'll actually, is it tomorrow? Uh, I think it's next week we'll be talking about doing photo books and stuff. And maybe that would be a good gift as well, okay? So this is the uh, good housekeeping list of gift ideas. <laughs> that's kind of fun. Oh, movie scratch off poster. Okay, that's pretty cool. Hey. So yeah, so all kinds of really neat stuff. Recommend recommended kind of all kind of price ranges in there. So there you are. There make your own hot sauce kit. Ooh, that sounds neat. All right, so we kind of come to the end of our class here. So does anybody have any further questions or anything? And I hope this is hope you enjoyed this class. This is kind of a, a fun class where we just kind of talk and discuss about which gifts, you know, recommended stuff. So any final questions? All right, so I'll go ahead and talk about some of our other upcoming classes and stuff and what we're going to be doing tomorrow. So tomorrow at 11 o'clock, I'll be doing the Raspberry Pi Computing Projects with me, Alex. And tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be doing Internet Safety and Security. So come join me for those two classes next week. Um, the 10th, we're going to be doing photography printing and virtual scrapbooking. So that's a real big one there. Um, we'll be talking about a lot of different ways, lots of different gift ideas. Okay. So a big one recommendation about that one after this one. If you go, hmm, I always have some good ideas, but I want to customize some gifts. Uh, maybe learn about printing a tile. Maybe learn about printing a virtual scrapbook or photo book and uh, come with me and we'll do that one and then on Wednesday next week I'll be doing a gadget help on Facebook live on the Harlem library and then a Raspberry Pi computer project at um, the uh, in the afternoon on the um, uh, 12th we'll be doing let's talk about Libby and free ebook digital audiobooks and other library resources and then join us that afternoon for an app swap okay I'll be talking about apps that I love, and of course, uh, you can talk about the apps you love too, okay? So, and because it's Thanksgiving, we got some fun Thanksgiving stuff. We'll do, be, a, be doing two Scratch projects this month. Scratch, let's make a turkey feather catch game, and Scratch, let's draw and animate a turkey, okay? So come join me for those two classes. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. On a side note, let you know that our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember having that subscribe drive. So if we can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, we'll get our own unique YouTube address or search YouTube 
or GCHRL videos. All right, thank you for joining me this afternoon. I had a good time. I hope you had a good time too. If you're re-watching this, please feel free to share this with friends or family too. Do you realize you can share our videos and when you share with YouTube, you can't actually tell uh, where the video to start. Uh, so if there was like one particular part of any of my videos that you're interested in sharing, you can actually set the start there and then share the link with family members. And when they click it, it'll start right there. Okay, so do realize that. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> so bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.